The Cheltenham Festival is a massive event in the horse racing calendar each and every year. It's a time where the opportunity is at its largest and therefore a time where I earn some of my largest profits of the year from my betting. The betting strategies that I used at Cheltenham are both match betting, using bookmaker bonuses as an advantage over the host to lock in some nice profits and bet for trading. The act of backing a runner at a specific price and laying that runner at a lower price with the aim of netting a profit in between those two prices. Over the course of the Cheltenham Festival I screen captured about 15 trades that I performed. So in this video I'm going to show you those trades, I'm going to walk you through my thought process with each of them and I'm going to explain exactly how they contributed to my accumulative £3,000 worth of free bets at this year's Cheltenham. So the first race I captured was this one right here. Now this was actually the third race of the festival. So over the first two races, I'd actually locked in slightly over £100 in profits. So I was feeling confident, which is always good when you're trading. I chose to place a lay bet on the second favourite for a total of £250 in the anticipation that the price would drift up. I also felt like the goffer, which was the favourite, could also receive some backing support. And with a betting exchange, if something's going one way, something else will have to go the other way to counteract that. And you can see on the left-hand side of the runner that I'm trading on, if the price reaches 10.0, there'll be just over a £500 free bet waiting for me on the second favourite. But of course, if the price starts moving off in the wrong direction, I will head into reverse free bet territory. So I need to be on the lookout for the market not going in the direction that I want it to go in. And if that does start to happen and that does become the case, I need to get out my position as quickly as possible for either a small win or a small loss. As time starts to pass by, the favourite on ladder one continues to get weaker and people appear to have stopped backing it. Therefore, I think it's likely that the favourite could start moving back up. And of course, that makes it unlikely that my runner will also move up as well. So I decide to close out my position on the second favourite and take out the profit and lock in about five pounds. The next trade that I want to show you is on the favourite in this 17.30 on day one, Embassy Gardens. Now for about half an hour I watched every man, woman and her dog back this runner in from odds of just short of 3.0 to 2.7, down to 2.6, to 2.5, literally thousands and thousands of pounds back in this runner thinking it's going to be the next big thing. So I decided to sit on the other side of the fence be contrarian and try to spot where the backing activity had stopped and therefore be one of the first members on the exchange on the other side of the market laying the runner in the anticipation that the price would regress back up to a higher level predominantly due to it being overbacked in the first place and as well as that hedging to pull the price back into position. Now once I felt like I'd spotted the bottom of the trend I started to gradually feed money into my trade starting off with £200 and I continued to lay this runner in increments of £200 until I was happy with the size of my position, which as you can see, is an £800 lay bet. The left hand side of the ladder shows the free bet size that I will have on the runner per tick that the price moves up. As you can see, the price starts to regress and I start to feed small £50 back bets across various prices to slowly start hedging my position as the market moves back up. About one minute until post, I've locked in £150 worth of free bets on the favourite and I have a cash out position option of around £55. However, I feel like this price is going to rocket out to the moon as there's still loads of lay bets frantically matching on this runner. And as time moves by, my hypothesis was correct as the price ended up flying back out all the way up to odds of free where I'm looking to take out my final £150 and ultimately close out my position. And as you can see, I earned a £275 free bet on the runner, but I chose to cash that out for a nice £91 worth of profit. So as you can tell, this is all quite an exciting concept. And if you are looking to get into this yourself, perhaps you're coming in from match betting, perhaps you're already a trader what's struggling a little bit, and you want to make long-term consistent profits out of the market, I've developed a resource to walk you through exactly the best way that you can do that. It's based on my experience from where I started to where I'm at now, and it reveals one of my favourite trading strategies broken down so you know exactly when to get into the market, what to do if the setup goes wrong, how to spot where the market's going to move just before it does move and now you can avoid big losses 
how the two minute mark works. I've jam packed all that into my pre off trading series and all the things that are super important when it comes to successful long term trading on Betfair. So I'll leave a link down below in the description to my pre off trading series. It's the ultimate resource if you're looking to get started with this and or become efficient at making long term profits out of these markets. The next exciting race that I captured was this 1650 from day two. Now you can see the price on Saints Row, which was the third favourite, had got stuck at a crossover point. Now going up past odds of 6, the incremental difference in price points is 0 0.2, and going down past odds of 6, the incremental difference in price points is 0 0.1. Now this also translates to the amount of profit you'll make should you lay the runner and the price moves up relative to going down. So in other words, it's more advantageous to lay at this point, and I think the market will actually realise this, act on it and ultimately the price will indeed move back up. So I started to feed in some £50 lay bets on this runner expecting my theory to come to fruition. I managed to squeeze in about £200 worth of lay bets before the price started to head back up and like you've seen me do before I offset all my hedge positions in on the other side of the market this time in £20 increments across various different prices. Once again, the higher that the price reaches, the larger the free bet that I will gain on this runner. A little later on, as I continue to push this trade as hard as I can, I start to feel like I'm being met with resistance. So in other words, the price refuses to drift up any further on this runner. So if that is the case, I expect the next move for the runner will be for the price to regress back down. So I pop in my remaining £100 on the backside on the runner, providing me with a £275 free bet on the third favourite, which I chose to hedge into a guaranteed £32 across every single runner. The next trade that I think you might find interesting is this one right here. This time I opt to lay the second favourite for £200 at the top of its traded range. Now following the crowd like this and chasing the market at the top of its traded range is not something that I do super frequently, but now and again I feel like it is warranted to do so. And in this instance I can see continued backing on the favourite. So I think this will be a good old case of the favourite getting backed and getting gambled and the second drifts out as nobody's interested in backing that runner and the book needs to equal about 100%. So like usual, my offset orders go into the market on the other side of the book. And now I need to see this number right here continue to go up fairly significantly to reinforce to me that people are still willing to lay this runner at this higher price. Which as you can see, that is the case. And slowly but steadily, the price starts to creep up again and I start to gain more profit as my offset orders start to get touched. Now as we get to the closing few minutes of this market, I'm looking to hedge my position at this level as the price has deviated quite a lot from where it started off at and I feel like a little bit of late hedging could pull the price back down in the wrong direction for us and once it's all said and done, I pocket £145 worth of free bets on this runner converting into a £19 of profit across all the runners guaranteed. Now if you're looking for some top tips from me and advice explaining exactly what I'm thinking and how I know these things are going to happen, I've recently set up a new email list about how I got started with trading and all the little sort of nuances in between which have helped me continue to make profits out of these markets. I'll leave another link down below in the description if you are interested in joining my email list. I try and send out emails as often as I possibly can, providing as much value and as much helpful information as I can get out there. And that email list is completely free to sign up. Once again, I'll leave it down below in the video description if you are interested in joining the email list. On the next trade, I spot an opportunity in the last few minutes of the market. I choose to place a lay bet on shake em up Harry, expecting the price of the runner to drift back up. Now as that move starts to occur, the fourth favourite actually gets back in support, which will help counteract my move as well. I offset my back bets into the market, trying to squeeze out every profit I can out to my trade. And as that race is just about to go in play, I drop my remaining £60 back bet into the market, providing a £500 free bet on Shake em Up Harry, quickly hedged into £40 worth of guaranteed profit across every single runner, regardless of the result. Now you might be asking yourself, do you not take any losses when you're trading? And the answer to that question is, 
Of course I do. All traders take losses. I actually usually sit between a 60 and a 70% strike rate on a daily basis. And my strike rate session to session is quite often to the lower end of that range as well. I'll pop a few losses on screen right now, which I took at Cheltenham this year. And for the most part, I'm pretty good at keeping my losses as small as possible and letting my wins ride for as long as possible, which of course, obviously, is the aim of the game. But of course, I'm making videos to be interesting and engaging, and the data I have would suggest that people don't find watching losses overly compelling. But I did think it was important to point out, it isn't all sunshine and rainbows and wins don't occur for me in every single trade. But I've just got pretty good at minimising losses and maximising wins, and that is enough for me to make profits over the long term trading in these markets. Okay, so on this next trade, you can see that the favourite is stuck around a crossover point. Now, I mentioned how beneficial crossover points are to traders earlier on. So as you can see, I'm building up a lay bet trading position on this favourite. I've got one eye on the third favourite because I feel that could be the runner which will receive back in support and which will help reinforce the drift on my runner. And as time moves on, I have my full position set in the market. In this case, you can see I've got a £700 lay bet. And as my runner receives continuous laying, the third keeps receiving backing, which starts to fill me with confidence that this trade is going to pan out. Now, this trading setup is one that I take very often under normal trading circumstances as well. And it isn't completely unrealistic for the price to move all the way back out towards a 4.0. After all, money has traded there in the past. And as time moves even further forward, I sit at around a £65 free bet and about £20 worth of cash out profits. Now I'll speed this clip up now and you can see exactly how this market pans out. As momentum keeps pushing the price even further up, I cancel my orders off and pop them in even further up the ladder, looking to pocket as much profit as I can from this trade. And with about 20 seconds left, I start to pull my orders down into the best available back price to hedge my position before the race goes in play. And once my final 50 quid back bet is filled, I'm left with 61 pounds of guaranteed profit across every runner in the race. The next race we're gonna look at is where I execute a trade on the favorite, Dino Blue. I can see that the favorite has been back fairly heavily and it's got stuck at this price and refused to move any shorter. And you can see that illustrated on the graph as well. I therefore started to iceberg in my lay bets into the market as I anticipated the runner's price will regress due to it being overbacked in the first place. And after a short period of time, I was happy with my overall exposure on this runner. In this case, my position is an £800 lay bet. So with this setup, I need to make sure that the third favourite doesn't start to regress back up in price as both my runner and the third favourite have been doing the exact same thing, as you can see on their respective charts. It's unlikely that they would both drift up at the same time to the extent in which I'm looking for. As time moves by, the price did indeed move up into the direction I was expecting on my runner. The third favourite's price has indeed stayed put as well. And if we move forward to the closing few minutes of the market, the liquidity picked up, the price on the third favourite broke down through the crossover point, and my runner continued its drift out towards odds of three. And with a short period of time left until the race started, I pulled down my remaining offset back orders to the best available back price, which ultimately results in 36 pounds worth of profit guaranteed across all the runners. So those are just a few of the trades that I performed at this year's Cheltenham and I remembered to hit the record button on. There were plenty of other markets that I participated in which contributed to £3,000 worth of free bets, which of course I choose to hedge my position, whether that be a win or whether it be a loss. Next up, check out this video right here which shows another trade that I performed at Cheltenham and I actually perform it live. It's broken down in significant depth so you can understand exactly how I knew the right moment to get involved in the market and earn my profits at a very low risk. Cheers for watching guys and I will see you in that next video.